Hello and welcome to episode two in the ZBrush training series brought to you by 3dbuzz.com. I'm Buzz. I'm Zach. Zach, our magical host of this training series, <laughs> will do some real world work this time around. Oh, instead of just goofing off and showing the interface? That's right. It's time to put ZBrush to the test. Okay. Let's make something. What are you going to make? Well, well, instead of painting, because you did a little bit of painting when we took the trip around the user interface in episode one. Sure. This time around, let's work with some 3D stuff. I want to see some sculpting this time. Okay. I want you to actually sculpt out a head. All right. I can do that. Okay. Well, let's do it then. All right. Well, let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to start off with a base 3D object. Okay. When you sculpt, you need something to work from. So I'm going to go under tool, and we're going to bring in the uh, sphere 3D object. Okay. Now, here's just a quick thing. I'm just going to show you how to create one of these. Boom. Okay. There's a sphere. That's what we're going to uh, base off of. But so this is what we're going to sculpt and yeah. mold into a head. But i got to kind of undo this. And the reason is I want to show you guys how to navigate a 3D object in your document. Oh, and navigating with a sphere would be kind of pointless. It's like rotating a cue ball around. You can't tell what's going <laughs> can't on. Tell. So okay. uh, let's grab something a little more interesting. I like these things. They're just cool. They're I, like deadly. I, yeah, I want one. <laughs> okay. So uh, here we go. We just dragged in a uh, 3D object. You just just click and drag, no problem. As soon as you bring this in, you do have the ability to move it. So you, can, you get like this little manipulator here, which you can drag around if you want to move. You can scale it, and you can rotate it. Now you'll notice it's disappearing back through the clipping plane. Don't right. worry about that. That's not a big deal as far as we're concerned. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get out of here. We'll undo this. We want him to basically... Go away. Let's go back to draw mode and just hit Control Z. Okay. Now let's drag out another one. The way that we're going to be using uh, to actually navigate this while we work on it is by going into edit mode, which okay. you can click on the uh, edit object icon, or you can hit T for the hotkey. Now, while you're in edit mode, you can also rotate around, and you'll notice that we do not go back through the clipping plane. Oh, we don't. I see. Now, the way that I'm doing this is by, I have put my mouse outside of the object. It's important that you remember we are not on the object. So before you were in that manipulator yeah. thing, now you're just outside the object, That's click right. and drag it. Yep. And it's just a freeform type rotation. Yeah, we can go in kind of any direction we want. So if I go from down here, we're spinning like so. Yeah, but won't that make it kind of challenging if you need to rotate it to, like to snap it to... Like a precise rotation? Yeah. Hold down the shift key while you're out here. You just click, drag, and at any point while you're rotating, hold down shift and pow. Ooh, nice. You get a precise rotation. Now, this is not set to any uh, specific preset, like down a given axis. It's just going to rotate to the nearest uh, the nearest major point. Well, like, that's going to make it uniform on yeah, both exactly. sides, if so, you will. Boom, there you go. So, so that's uniform both I, sides. Yeah, I get it close to side to side, hold down shift, and it just pops right And if right you there. take it out where it's straight up and down, again, if you think about boom. it, split it right down the center, it's uniform on both sides. Okay, exactly. I see how that works. Cool. So uh, that's a, an easy one. You'll be using that a lot. Now, uh, another one that you'll need to use is to pan this object around. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky if you're not paying a whole lot of attention. You have to remember that ZBrush is not a 3D application. Right. Uh, for all intents and purposes, this is still a tool and not a true 3D object, even though we're kind of moving it around as if it were one. Gotcha. Now, why is that important to us? Well, a document can be navigated using the navigation buttons on this uh, side of the interface, over on the right-hand side. Okay. We can uh, scroll the document we can zoom the document. Uh, we can send it back to its actual zoom. We can see an anti-aliased half-size version if gotcha. we just want to see it you know, kind of looking pretty, so to speak. But that's not going to actually help us while we're sculpting. Okay. Reason being is that uh, we can't necessarily uh, move this guy around without holding down the Alt key and dragging. Ah. And now what we're doing is we're moving this 3D object around inside of our document. Gotcha. So we can uh, rotate. We can move. And here's another one that's a little bit tricky. Let's say we need to quote unquote zoom. Okay. You can't. You can't actually zoom because you're, you're scaling it. I take yeah, it. Yeah, your camera is locked. What you can do is you can scale your object up and down. And you don't have a camera. It's just a canvas. Well, let's, <laughs> your eyes. I mean, I keep saying camera because I'm so used to coming from a 3D uh, yeah, I got background. You. But uh, we know we can't actually zoom. What we can do is scale the object up and down. And the way I'm doing that is by holding down the Alt key as if I was going to try to pan. Okay. But while I'm panning, let go of the Alt key, and as you drag now, oh, okay. you're scaling up and down. Okay, it takes nice. a little bit of getting used to. Okay, so there's a quick look at navigating. It's everything you really need to know to navigate around. Now, notice everything I did, I had clicked off the surface of the object. Mm -hmm. If I click on the surface, we start sculpting. Whoa. So that's just left dragging. So you can make a sphere, do that, and turn that into a head. Exactly. So now you can drag off and rotate around. Yep. 
and you can see how oh, I've rock on. melted the thing and all sorts of stuff like that. So now let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, our tool here. I'm going to get out of edit mode. Okay. This object now just became a bunch of pixels. Right. Let's just go ahead and hit Control Z. Gotcha. On. All right, so with that understood, also check this out. Take a close look at my tool now. Your video may be really small, but you'll notice that no longer looks like a gear. Mm -hmm. It's our melted version of the gear. So at any point, I could uh, actually recreate that if I wanted to. Very cool. Right from where I left off. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a sphere. And let's drag this in. Now, if you look really closely on your, uh, on your monitor, if you're following along with me, mm -hmm. you're going to notice that the pole of the sphere is pointed straight at you. Gotcha. Uh, if you're watching this on a smaller video, you probably don't even notice that. Right. What I'm going to do is go into edit mode, and I'll drag out here on the right-hand side, and I'm carefully rotating the pole up, and I'm holding down the shift key to get us rotated to a, uh, a, an exact So our poles up and are now, yeah, that's sitting. Top and the bottom. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, once I've done that... I can go ahead and start sculpting, but I don't want to sculpt both halves of the head. I want to do half the work and make the other half appear uh, automatically. Makes sense. I can do that by tapping the X key, and what this is going to do is make a copy of my brush. Anything I do on one side will be copied across the X axis onto the other side. If you want to, you can also hit Y, and you can copy across Y, and you can hit Z and copy across Z. So you can get all Whoa. sorts of interesting effects that way. Nice. Now let me go ahead and undo that. We'll go ahead and hit Z to turn that off. We'll hit Y to turn that off. And it's time to finally start sculpting. One last thing before I really start getting into this. I am going to be sculpting using a Wacom tablet. Okay. That means there's a little bit of pressure sensitivity involved. If you're trying to follow my uh, example stroke for stroke as I go through this, and you notice that your mouse just isn't doing exactly what I'm doing, that's why. Stroke for stroke. Let me also remind you guys that there is some artistic skill that is required in doing this. Sure. You're not going to be able to watch exactly where his mouse goes and reproduce the exact thing. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's just the way things go. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and start off. I'm, uh, take a look at some of the sculpting commands before we actually start making our head. Okay. So if I was to just click and draw, you'll notice what we're doing right now is we're pulling out away from the surface. Cool. Like so. Now, that's interesting, but why are we doing that? Do you remember our tools that we set up in the first uh, episode? Mm -hmm. We had Z add and Z subtract. Z add is going to pull out from the surface. Z subtract is going to push inward. Nice. So therein lies the, uh, the, the nature of sculpting right there. Sure. You also have Z intensity, which is how far you want to push and pull. I'll be okay. uh, switching between those a lot. Now, I like to use the right mouse button to change these. Sometimes I'll go up there. I don't really have a set way. So if you see me do either one, that's why. We're going to start off with Z sub and uh, with a very low intensity. I'm going to start to carve in some eye sockets. Now, another note for those of you who are completely new to this it is a good idea to use very, very light strokes with a low intensity and build your strokes up on top of each other. Don't go in and be like, well, let's see, let's make some eye sockets. <laughs> I mean, we, we've started making Jack Skellington now. Yes, we have. Which is cool, but that's not the direction we're going. So, again, just you know, go gently, build things up slowly. So now there's really the all I really need to start with some eye sockets. Okay. And we're going to have to pull some eyes back out of that a little bit later, but... We'll worry about that in a bit. So let's go back to add, and I'll pull out some cheekbones, maybe make my brush a little bit bigger. I just hit the S key to do that. So pull out some cheekbones. We can go ahead and start to pull out a nasal area. Let's make the brush smaller again. And I'll just pull down the bridge of the nose a little bit. And uh, size back up, follow around the chin. Another thing you're going to have to uh, keep in mind, this is a lot like sculpting with clay kind of like a, a digital clay surface where you almost have an infinite supply of clay, but also like sculpting in clay, it's going to look pretty bad when you first get started. And you're going to need to kind of be patient with yourself. Well, let's drag out a little bit of a chin. A little bit. Well, see, here's the cool Jay thing. Jay Leno, man. Well, we've, uh, <laughs> you know, we've talked about pushing and pulling. Another very important thing is you can hold down the shift key, and you'll notice that my brush turns blue. Right. And now as I drag, I'm smoothing back out. Ah, cool. And that's something you're going to be doing a lot. And actually, it's my favorite uh, method of sculpting where I'll over-exaggerate something and then smooth it back down. Gotcha. So now I can you know, pull these cheekbones out a little more. In fact, I'm going to adjust my focal shift a little bit to make it just a little bit bigger. There you go. We can pull that out and then smooth it back down. And I do a lot of back and forth like that. So we can smooth our jaw in a little bit. Let's maybe go to Z sub. And there's one thing I do really want to get done, and that is to um, 
bringing the sides of the head because you know a head shouldn't be spherically shaped. Nice giant round. I don't know pumpkin. It looks like a space ball. <laughs> Good movie. And that's a little bit far, so we'll smooth a little bit, and then we'll start to pull that back out a little bit. And again, it's sculpting is an intuitive process. It's not a mechanical, like, you can't just say, here, now do this exactly and do that. You're going to have to kind of feel your model and do what feels right to you, like not make a head that's this lumpy. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And I notice I fall right into saying the word zoom, which I said earlier we're not doing. In essence, all he did was scale it down some. Yeah. And again, we're just doing some back and forth, adding in some volume to the head, and then smooth it back down. That forehead kind of pokes up a little bit, so we'll get some volume back here at the back of the head. Get this back in. And laid over on the side. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, it may get just a bit quiet while Zach's just doing his thing. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but that's kind of the way it's going to be when you're sculpting. Usually I have music turned on, but we don't want to violate any copyright laws. No, and you definitely don't want me singing, so... Yeah, so we're just going to stay quiet. So exactly. let's pull out some eyebrows. I could pull the cheekbones out a little bit further. Let's take a look at the jawline. I mean, we really kind of need to come out quite a bit further here. So bring the mouth out as well. And smooth back out. Let's worry a little bit more about the nose. So really, you're just jumping back and forth. Whoa, that's a nose, all right. Yeah, it is. Doing just a, uh, just a couple different operations you're switching back and forth between. Yeah, I do um, a lot of, uh, really, I pull probably more than I push in. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I just and smooth it back and down. Smooth, pulled yeah. and smooth. And that's going to be the, uh, the nature of my workflow. But, of course, you know, while you're doing this, feel free to experiment. And if you have a way that you like to work that's a little bit different but um, works better for you, well, good. Use it. Don't think that I have all the answers. I wish I did. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because we could get rich because <laughs> you'd have all the answers. Well, 42. <laughs> the ultimate answer. There you go. So um, this is coming along. Maybe kind of take a little bit of that nose out. Yes, yeah, a scary nose. Give him a little bit of a nose job. Let's pull him back over here. And some of that nose I won't be able to clean up until I get a little more detail detail in place. But we can get a start. I mean, that that's probably going to be functional for now. Let's go into subtraction, kind of push back in that upper lip a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull in a neck because we can start um, really kind of controlling the look of the entire head from there. Okay. Make my brush nice and huge. And I try never to go too high with the uh, Z intensity, but you got to have some here. Right. And you'll notice pulling out the neck is pretty easy. Let's... Whoop. Actually, it's a little bit too much. It's going to need to be wider here along this side. And we'll start smoothing a little bit. And smooth down there across the bottom. Now I'm going to take my brush and make it smaller and make kind of an edge around the base of the neck, almost like this was a statue head mm -hmm. that was broken off. Or cut off. Or severed head. That's a much more morbid way to look at this. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but now that you Well, it's not, it up, it's not like we're modeling, you know, the spinal column hanging out or anything like that. I'll be quiet. Yeah, I was going to say, don't <laughs> insert anything there. Let's... Okay, so uh, let's see. We're still on ads, so let's, um, let's worry a little bit about the jawline here. Now, again, exaggerate, overdo it, and then come back in and smooth it out. The other cool thing about uh, working in this way is that you can follow some of the, the major muscles 
of the uh, facial area. So I mean like the, the jaw muscles and whatnot. You can bring those in and then smooth them back out. And what you created is going, like the essence of it will stay there, which is a great way to sculpt. Let's go into subtraction, though. Our face is a little bit fat right in here. I can kind of pull this in. I'm looking for more of a, a gaunt character. Or a little more gaunt than we have anyways. So pull some of this in. Bring those cheekbones in a little bit. <laughs> He's completely lost his chin there, so we won't do that. This is where ZBrush gets fun, though. And this is where you just sit back, turn on some tunes, and just play. Okay, let's play a little bit with the neck while we're at it, though. Let's see, we want that tendon right in there. And we'll smooth that back out. And we'll bring in the Adam's apple. And just smooth all that out. And you can see the point of that uh, sphere kind of playing a little bit into our shape. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. Okay, so certainly coming along. I mean, it's starting to look like a head. Whoa. Careful. Okay, uh, let's see. Now, here's the deal. You'll notice that I haven't changed my surface and that I haven't added any more detail. Okay, Currently, so talk I'm, about this detail. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to sculpt with the detail that came along as a standard, if you will. Wow, that was scary. Here in just a second, what we're going to do is we're going to add some detail to this character so that we have a higher resolution face. As you can imagine, if he just stayed with this level of polygon detail, we wouldn't be able to make anything that was extremely interesting. And this is already kind of cool, but it could be a lot cooler if we could just work a, a bit more out of it. Now, let's see. A couple more things I just want to take a look at. Maybe pull a little bit back out of the head. A little bit of the forehead and Stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm making no claims that this is going to be anatomically correct to a human being, guys. No, of course not. This is a head. Maybe an alien species. That's the, that's the old fallback for 3D artists. It's an alien or it's a monster. But this is a training video. so. <laughs> Alright, so let's say that's about as far as we can push that. He's got a really pushed out nose, doesn't he? Yeah. That's right. Let's see if I can deal with that. We'll subtract some of this stuff out. A little too much there. Be a little more gentle with that. And we'll just start kind of smoothing out the nose strategically. That mirroring along X is doing so much of that work for me. It's great. All right. And we'll add back in some of the nose from here. And we've taken out a lot of that face forward slant that he had there. Yeah, that's coming in a lot, a lot better. Okay, good start. Okay. Now let's take this and let's add some detail to it. Now here's the trick. What I want to do is I want to come over to Tools. I want to dock this palette over here on the left. Okay. reason is a lot of the things that we're going to be doing to this object require the Tools palette. Why? Because this is not a 3D object. Again, this is a tool. Now currently this is a sphere that has been sculpted. The problem with that is that I have the ability to reinitialize this all the way back to a, an original sphere. Okay. I can lose everything that I've done, and I don't want to be able to do that. Also, there is certain functionality, like the use of uh, Projection Master, which we'll probably be talking about in a later video, mm -hmm. that we can't do if we leave this as a quote-unquote sphere. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a polymesh 3D object. And what that does is this recreates our object 
as a 3D surface. Okay. It's no, it'll no longer be a, uh, a sphere, if you will. You can th- if you're a Maya person, you can think of this like deleting history. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We've just created our, uh, our 3D sphere. Notice we have a new tool that just appeared, PM3D Sphere 3D Copy 1. Mm-hmm. That is our model. That is everything that we've just been sculpting on. But uh, that PM3D tells you it's now a poly mesh 3D object instead of a primitive sphere with some sculpting done to it. Gotcha. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Edit, Turn Off, Edit, and we're going to clear our canvas at this point. Or right, let's go to Layer and just click Clear. And now let's grab the PM3D tool. And I'll hold down shift and drag a copy of it out. Holding down shift just gave us some orientation. Okay. So now we'll, we can go into edit mode. And we have the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look any different at all. The reason that this is important, though, is that now we can go into the geometry menu. And we have some interesting things in here. We can divide this. Oh, it just got a lot smoother, it just too. just got a whole lot smoother. We could divide it again. And it gets smoother still. Yeah, it does. And now we can step to different levels of smoothing. So it's like this is where we started. I think I've pushed this about as far as I can. So now I can drag up to level two, and I can sculpt here. Okay. When I'm satisfied with that, I can drag up to level three. At any time, keep this in mind. You can hold your mouse, uh, just move your mouse over your object, and there's your poly count. Currently, we're sitting at 131,000 polys. Gotcha. We can do better. Uh, we can push this. Probably on this machine, I wouldn't go much higher than, say, 1.5 million. Okay. Um, but it's going to be based on your own computer. Make a judgment call on how your system is responding whenever you hit that divide button. If things start to slow down on you, you can go to, let's say, we pop over to level two. Like, let's just say, for example, three was too high. Mm-hmm. We can step down to level two, and we can click delete higher. Ah. And now we can only go between level one and two. Gotcha. So for now, I'll just leave this at two. We can subdivide again later, and I can continue sculpting. So we could smooth the face out here. Let's let's do a little bit of work on that nose. So we'll scale everything up, and we can move our object. You'll notice, like, there's no place that I can click off the model, Mm -hmm. so it'd be hard to navigate. I have a little navigation tool over here that I can use to move this guy around. So I just kind of drag that around. Now... Let's, uh, let's see, we're in subtraction, so we could real carefully kind of carve around there, start to pull out a nostril, and give a little more form to the nose itself. And I do have a tendency to kind of get lost in the forest for all the trees here, so if while I'm working you have any suggestions you want to make? All right, just go right ahead. Do your thing. At this point, if our audience wants to turn on some music themselves. Yeah, it may not be a bad idea. Oh, and look at this. We actually have a problem. Um, I'm not mirroring my my brush right now. So we need to undo all the way back to before I actually did any changes and make sure we do re-hit the X key. The reason for that is we brought in a new tool. Gotcha. So we have to reestablish that uh, mirroring operation. Okay, good thing to point out. So uh, let's get back to what we were doing. We could carve some stuff back in real gently over here. Now, again, I mean, on my end, it's probably going to look a little bit smoother because I have that whole pressure sensitivity advantage. Let's go ahead and start bringing in a lip. Lips always look funny when you first start carving them in. (laughs) And, uh, oh, here's another good one. If you uh, get lost at some point, you're like, I need to get away from this model, you can just hold down the Alt key and click, okay. and that will kind of frame him up and zoom you out at the same time. So kind of a nice little trick there. Okay, so let's get in a little bit closer, and I'll start up by making my brush just a tad smaller. Maybe go to subtraction. Whoops, don't want to really do that. Carefully use this to help shape where our mouth is going to go. Whoops. Now another really important thing here is always keep in mind how much detail you have the ability to create. 
Don't let yourself get bogged down in making the perfect mouth if you don't have enough polygons to do it. Really start readjusting that jawline based on this new level of detail. <laughs> that was great. pretty funny. Yeah, great stuff. Again, exaggerating and then smoothing. Yeah. But it's like you can tell here, there's no way I have enough polygons Obviously. to make a really nice looking mouth there. So. Right. I'm going to have to subdivide at some point. Also, just kind of a, a note to the side, this is a fun thing to do when playing around in ZBrush. If your purposes uh, were to get this out of ZBrush and take it over to a 3D package, you probably wouldn't want to model in this way because this is not animatable. Right. I just wanted to make a point of that. And this would be great if you're like sculpting a statue or you know something that is just going to stay strictly in ZBrush. But if you have other plans for it, you may want to make a base mesh in your modeling application of choice. Or you could use Z-Spheres, which is something that I'm sure we'll tackle at some point in this series. Oh, yeah. But you wouldn't necessarily use this method. Whoops, wrong direction. I'm sure we, there we go. Kind of push in the sides of the nose a little bit. So notice for now I'm pretty much taking out all the detail I lay down, but there is a little bit left behind when I do that. Looks like he's got his had his eyes stitched closed or something. It's kind of scary. All right, let's maybe move down here a little bit. Let me try this. Let's pop over to here. Now, what I've just done is I've gone back down to my first level of subdivision. And I'm going to try to build the neck forward a little bit so we're not necessarily building down to that point. So things are going to look a little bit strange down here at the bottom of the neck for just a moment while I work on this. Ah, actually... It looks like it's going to be a little bit more of a hassle to fix than I really want it to be. Yeah. Well, it all goes down to you really wouldn't want to create like an animated model this way, so I won't worry too much about it. Let's bring my intensity back down. We could thicken this up a little bit. Subdivision level one. Okay, and we could pull out some basic ears. We're probably not going to have enough polygonal detail to make some really nice ears without the computer exploding, but we can try. So let's get over here to the side of the head. 
I'll just trace out the ear and pull it way out. And it's I'll a giant it. tumor growth. That's what it's going to kind of look like at first. <laughs> Let's pull our Z intensity way back down. Got to be patient with this, too, because, I mean, if you take the really big, easy strokes, you're going to be able to tell. And you really want to kind of build these strokes one on top of the other. Sure. Now we can probably take our brush and squish it back down and start to push this back into the head a little bit. Get that division between the ear and the lobe, the side of the head. All right, so that's a good start. For as many polygons as I have anyway. So let's go ahead and kick this up another level. So we'll hit divide, and it just almost immediately gets smoother. That leads me to believe we could probably crank the level of detail of this right on up, because usually if it's going to take a while, you get this loading bar that comes across the of the UI. If you notice that loading bar on your end, start reconsidering how many times you hit the divide button. <laughs> Especially if that loading bar comes in and kind of sits there for a while. Then you're really going to want to think about how much further you want to go. Let's go ahead and push this in, actually, and then we'll pull back out the little ridges and things. Probably also get away with pulling... Whoop, I'm going in the complete wrong direction. Into the Vulcan thing? <laughs> you could. Okay, maybe not. Well, if I really wanted to do that, I'd have sculpted them that way in the first place. Right. Instead of just trying to rip the top of his ear off. Probably smooth around the... Uh, how are you looking at my ear? Yeah, <laughs> I needed something to look at. Yeah, doing it without reference adds a bit of a challenge to the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, I am just totally making this up off the top of my head until I just looked over there at Jason's ear, so... And this is in no way a represent... But it does look like an ear. I mean, if somebody handed it to me, I, I'd be grossed out, but I'd know what it was. smooth down just a little bit up in here. I mean, I'm sure we can go one more level of uh, of detail at some point. So what else can we play with um, in this uh, at this subdivision level? Here? Oh, there's all sorts of stuff. We could carry on for... In yeah, fact, this, this like we never touched the back of the neck. This rut that runs around. Here, how it kind of carves in yeah. dead. Here, let's make our brush a little bit bigger. Ah! So his ear looks kind of attached. I mean, you really want to dig in there with your brush. And it might help if I increased my focal shift a little bit.
Speaking of ZBrush and really high resolution stuff, mm-hmm. I've got that Mad World song stuck in my head. Which song? Mad World song from the uh, Gears of War. Trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep thinking about that. Gears comes out in a few days. Yes, it does. If that gives anybody an idea of when this video is taking place. All right. I don't want to dent up the side of his head too much. But I don't mind putting a little bit of an indention there at the temple and maybe smoothing it back out really gently. Get that palette out of my way. Now let's move away from the ears for just a little bit. Can yeah, because I'm not... Bounce around. Because obviously, in creating a nice looking head, it's going to be more than a 30 minute Oh, yeah, you could, you could definitely sit here and you can sculpt on this thing for days if you just really wanted to. Oh, that looks a lot better. Let's smooth that out a little bit. Oops. Again, wrong okay. direction. There you go. Maybe push this up a little bit. So I gave him a scar over there. Smooth that out a little bit. Ah. You'll probably notice on some of the higher levels that smoothing doesn't seem to work quite as quickly. And that's just because there's so many more things that need to be averaged. Add some volume back in here, but I'll do it with a slightly bigger brush. Maybe a little work around the eyes at this. Yeah. Here, let me push this in real quick. It's driving me nuts. And then I'll move up there to the eye area. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And let's see here. Now, you may be tempted, just because you have the power, to go in and start adding where, you know, you could crank up your subdivisions and you could add, you know, little wrinkles around the eyes or whatnot. I wouldn't do it that way. I would use uh, Projection Master, which is probably not something that we would dig into in this video. If you want to play with carving them in yourself, that's totally cool. But I'm just saying, like, on a, what, on a professional level, for, like, the final result, sure, I'd project them in. So 
Let's maybe just pull the whole thing out a little bit and then I'll cut in some slits for the eyes. It's going to look really funky here for a second. Kind of scary like. Yeah. Reminds me of the movie Event Horizon. Yeah, it might be a little easier if I step down to a, a lower level of detail. Because uh, you're going to notice you get faster results with some of your tools when you do it at a lower level. So don't be afraid to jump around. Okay. Now let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of spooky. That is really scary. But I gotta admit, I mean, I would probably stick spheres in there. Like I'd sculpt sure. out some eyelids and then just make some spheres. Sure. Uh, let's see. All right, zoom back out a little bit. All right, so there he's coming along. Yeah, I mean, you start to see the areas that are going to need more work, of course. And, yeah, to be honest with you, we're about 41 minutes in. Wow, so, time just flies, doesn't it? So I think this is going to be a, a good stopping point. I think we all can see that after, you know, an hour to two hours with this, it's going to really be yeah. getting there. You could just really push this really in the direction you wanted to go. For sure. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted episode two to cover was – just how to get in there with a 3D tool and start sculpting it into something. Yeah. And that's what we've got here. I definitely see a, a very scary man's face, a <laughs> guy that I would not want to run into in the park. You know. Now, uh, later on in this series, we're going to take a look at doing similar sculpting uh, techniques, but by bringing in a base mesh okay. that we, will, uh, we could either create in ZBrush or from another application such as 3ds Max or Maya. And by doing that, we're going to have a, a better base topology to build from. So that things like, you know, the, the curvature of the mouth and whatnot will start to flow together much more naturally. Cool. All right. Well, with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Now, in upcoming episodes, we will show you how you can take something that you've sculpted like this and then start painting on it yeah. so that you can really bring it to life with, you know, what's going to appear to be fantastic textures, sure. wrinkles, etc. Anyways, that's going to wrap this episode up. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you. Thanks.